In this mini-series on diversification in trading, we're now starting to get a grounding in the knowledge required to implement a diversification strategy. And so today, we start to look at some of the more practical aspects that need to be considered around the implementation side. And this is actually different for discretionary traders compared to algorithmic traders, where there are different implications for how easy it will be to make a diversification strategy work in practice. And so all will be revealed as to why this is. Stay tuned. This is the third episode in the mini-series on diversification. And in the first two episodes, we looked at an introduction to the subject and also a specific example that illustrated the power of diversification if done properly. Then last time, we considered the question of whether diversification is the golden bullet or the answer to all of your risk management issues. And of course, the answer to that was no, but the conclusion we came to was that it is still a critical component of risk management. And now this time, we start to look at some of the practicalities of implementing a diversification strategy. And I also examine some of the differences between what that really means for discretionary traders compared with algorithmic traders. So let's make a start. And the first thing that I want to remind ourselves about is the importance of diversification as a component of your risk management strategy. And you'll remember that the definition we came up with was that diversification is a technique that contributes to lowering the overall portfolio risk. And if we think about what this really means, well, of course, it means that we must therefore be capable of effectively managing a portfolio to take advantage of diversification. And how easy that will be to do will, to some extent, depend on whether you're a discretionary trader or an algo trader. Let me explain. If you're a discretionary trader who looks at charts and performs analysis manually on each of those charts, then clearly you're going to have to be able to do that on multiple charts simultaneously. And so, for example, if you were trading three assets, then that's three charts that you need to be monitoring, analyzing, and making decisions about. Now, let's expand that argument and consider trading on multiple time frames as well. So you might be trading a similar system in a lower time frame, a medium time frame, and a higher time frame. And if you were doing that for all three of those assets, then of course this multiplies up. So now you're effectively having to analyze nine charts. Taking the argument even further, Let's say that you were trading multiple strategies on each of those charts. So if that was three strategies, then all of a sudden you're now having to perform 27 pieces of analysis. Now, there may well be some discretionary traders who can do this, but I certainly know it's not something that I could do personally. And I would argue that this makes it very difficult to scale diversification strategies effectively. Now, let's look at algo traders. And there are scalability considerations here also. And this tends to come around the fact that it generally takes a significant amount of time to develop an algo trading system. So starting off with that initial system idea or premise, going through the development stage, the optimization stage, validation stages, position sizing, strategy development, and so on, all takes time to do and all takes time to code. And this is where the pinch point comes with algo trading. However, the difference is that once you have those strategies coded, they can then become highly scalable 
and exploit diversification to a significant degree. So, for example, if you've developed a system where the rules are relatively simple and that is capable of exploiting repeatable patterns, so maybe a trading range or a trend or a breakout, that we typically see in all markets, then this means the diversification becomes relatively simple. And you can set that strategy onto multiple asset classes, assets within those classes, multiple time frames with relative ease. And all you then need to do, of course, is to monitor your systems to make sure that they're trading as you expect them to. And the process of expanding across more time frames, more trading strategies, more asset classes is nowhere near as big a problem as it is for the discretionary approach. So just to give you some kind of an indication of my own diversification strategy, I currently trade 25 assets. That's made up of 22 currency pairs and three stock indices. Now, commodities is something that I've not really explored very much. I've performed some initial backtesting on those, and in general, many of the systems I have appear to perform just as well, if not better, on some commodities. And so this is an area that I'm looking to expand into and diversify into shortly. Now, of course, with commodities, this actually gives you much more scope for diversification than you get in stock indices. As I said in the last episode, all stock indices tend to follow each other. And so they tend to be very correlated. When one goes up, they all go up. When one goes down, they all go down. Whereas with commodities, that's not the case. We have different sectors. So for example, precious metals, energy, food, and these all themselves tend to be relatively uncorrelated. So this is one area I'm really looking forward to exploring in the coming months. Incidentally, I'm also considering expanding my portfolio of currency pairs from 22 to 28. Now, in terms of the timeframes that I typically trade, these range from anything as low as the five minute chart up to the H4 chart. And so typically this constitutes seven timeframes that I trade. Now, in addition to this, I have what I would broadly class as six trading strategies that I then choose to trade on a combination of those assets and timeframes. But I don't trade all of them across all of those combinations. But just to give you an idea of what that actually means in reality is that for 25 assets across seven timeframes, that represents what's effectively 175 charts. So if a discretionary trader was to do the same, that's how many charts they'd have to analyze, which clearly is not going to be a possibility. But then when you multiply that up across the trading strategies, as I said, I don't combine the whole combination there, but if we base that on maybe an average of three, that effectively ups this to around about 500 sets of analysis. And this is the real beauty of algorithmic trading in that it allows you to diversify to this extent. And that brings me on really nicely to the subject of the next four episodes. And here I'm going to be looking at four different techniques that you can take around diversification in your own strategies. And if the first of those four is already available, you'll see it top right now. Please do remember to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and now until next time, trade safe.